All right, Karen Garage is interesting. Okay, somebody divorces his wife. You're permitted to marry whoever you want, except for so and so. Now we'll have to see exactly what the word "except" means. Is that does that mean that you're permitted to everyone except for so and so, or does it mean I'm giving you a condition? I'm giving you a divorce on condition you don't marry somebody this person. And if you marry this person, the condition nullifies the divorce. Okay, so Rabbi Yezer says it, the divorce is kosher. Rabbi Chacham say it's not a kosher divorce. Why? Because you're not permitting her to marry whoever she wants. The definition of a divorce is that she's permitted to marry whoever she wants. Kate said, Yasa, what's the solution? He should take the get from her. He should give a divorce again and say that uh, you are permitted to marry whoever you please. If, however, it was written in the document, the condition wasn't said verbally, it was written. Even if he erases it, it doesn't, the, the document was written incorrectly. Therefore, the document is invalid. And the divorce is not, is not kosher, even if he took it back and, and gave, it, gave it back again with, with, with the erasure in the document. Okay, Slimar so wants to know, What does Ela mean? Does it mean an exception? You're permitted to everyone except for so and so, or is it amenas? Is it a condition? I'm, I'm, I'm permitting you to marry whoever you want on condition you don't, you don't get married to that person. To Reuven, let's say, if you marry Reuven, then, then this divorce should retroactively be invalid. <clears throat> so the more explains. Chutzu is it an exception? who the and the rabbis disagree with Rabbi Eliezer specifically where you make an exception, the Hoshai or the Baget, because the, the divorce isn't a complete divorce. It, in other words, to a certain extent, she remains attached to you. And that to, and the extent is that she's pr prohibited to this person. But with a condition, it could be that they would agree a condition is a full-fledged divorce. He's divorcing her completely. She can get married to whoever she wants, according to the divorce. Except if she gets married to a certain person, to Reuven, let's say, then the divorce becomes bought to retroactively, becomes invalid retroactively. So it could be that they'd agree to Rebbe Yezer. In other words, what is divorce? Divorce is completely freeing her to marry whoever she wants. And a condition is a complete freedom. It just happens to be that to fulfill the condition, you'll be restricted. But it doesn't change that the, the divorce is a standard divorce. Whereas a chutz is not a standard divorce. A chutz is, you're permitted to marry whoever you want, except for that person. So it could be the rabbis disagree with Rebbe Lozer with regard to chutz, but it could be they would agree with him with regard to amanas, with a condition. Just like any condition. You know, if, if, the, if the husband makes a condition that she has to pay him $10,000, the condition is valid. And so too, maybe he can make a condition that she can't get married to a certain person. Or maybe Amanas, uh, Amanas, who the mission is talking about an Amanas, a condition. Amanas, who the plea, the, the, who the plea, the the answer would disagrees with the rabbis specifically with regard to a condition because the condition is really a regular get with a, with a condition attached instead of ten thousand dollars, it's a, it's a marital restriction. That's where Rebbe disagrees with the rabbis, but where there's an exception. So the divorce isn't a regular divorce. Maybe he'd agree to the rabbis that the divorce would not be valid. In other words, you have two, two versions of the mission here. Is the, mission, is the debate here about an exception to a divorce or about a condition to a divorce? Either of which relates to an individual who... Um, an, uh, an individual who wrote either which relates to a person who the woman cannot marry, either by condition or by exception. And the Umar points out that it would seem that the, the sort of the bigger chiddush here, the bigger idea is the idea that you could even write a divorce with an exception. Who says that such a concept exists? And if you'll say it does exist, according to Rebbe Lazar, you could write a divorce with an exception. It could be that the rabbis disagree with him in that specific scenario with an, when you make an exception. But a condition, you could you can make a divorce with a condition. Maybe they agree, maybe they'd agree. The same thing is true in the inverse. If 
Rabbi Lazar only disagrees with regard to a condition. Presumably, as an exception, he would agree that you cannot make an exception to a divorce. Divorce has to be a regular divorce. You can't make an exception. I'll skip ahead to uh, a little bit to tomorrow. But the Gemara makes an interesting point here. This is a very interesting thing to think about. You have a woman who gets divorced, but her husband's such a divorce, right? So you can get married to whoever you want, except for that Kayan. Okay? And then the husband dies. According to, according to the rest of the world, according to every other Kayan except for him, she is a Grusha. And according to that Kayan, she's an Almono. She's a widow, not a divorcee. And the Gemara sort of says that such a logic is so far-fetched that it's very difficult to understand why the halacha would be like below. So we'll get to it. But uh, it's just a good example to show how far this would this would this would, this would work. What's an exception versus a condition? I mean, basically, it's the same. No, so an exception result. is changing. The, you write it's the same result, but it's changing the methodology. So you have a, a condition is basically a regular standard divorce. It says in it you can marry whoever you want. Mm -hmm. It's just that by condition he'll nullify to get the divorce if the guy goes ahead and marries. If the, if if the woman goes ahead and marries a specific guy, so it's a stand, the divorce is standard. Okay. It's the condition that's that that's sort of a modifying factor. An exception is a different type of divorce. So he doesn't tell her you're permitted to marry whoever you want. She says you're permitted to marry whoever you want, except for except for that guy. That guy can't. You're not permitted. So he's changing the fundamental nature of the document, okay. as opposed to an exception where, according to the document, she can marry whoever she wants. It's just the condition that restricts restricts her. Okay, I'm Ravina. So Ravina says, Toshma, I'll bring you proof from this b'risa. Kol ha-botem metamen benigom. All houses can, can become tame with a nega. What's the nega? This is the, the spiritual type of leprosy that can afflict houses as well. What does that mean? Except for a house of an Anjou. What does Ella mean here? Iyam et bishlema chutz. Chutz shaper. If you say the word Ella means chutz, so this makes a lot of sense. All the houses are all houses can become tummy with Negam, except for a house owned by an Anjou, which does not have this concept of a spiritual affliction of a nega. However, El El Yamit Amanas, Amanasu, if you'll say that it's condition, Amanas Lai Mitm Bhati of Yachavim Huy Mitm Bhati Israel, does that make sense? A condition that non Jews' houses don't become tummy, then Jews' houses become tummy. Does that mean? If they do become Tommy, then the houses of Jews don't become Tommy. That doesn't make any sense. It's clearly not a condition. Void, and not only that, it's clear. Can, a, can the house of a non Jew become Tommy? We learned in the Specifically, a Jewish house can become Tommy from the garment, but not a non-Jewish house. So obviously the word Elo here is, is an exception. It's not a condition. So that's the case in our mission as well. We should treat the word Elo as an exception. The debate between the rabbis and the laws are Elo Shema Mino, Chutzu, Shema Mino. So Eric, we're on uh, what is it, uh, seven lines in the bottom of the page. Wait, page and uh, how many lines at the bottom? Six, seven lines towards the end of the line. Just a little uh, fill, fill you in here for a second. So we have a, we have a debate in the mission between Rabbi and the Rabbi The guy gave his wife a divorce. You're permitted to marry whoever you please, except for, for a specific guy. We call him Reuven. According to the rabbis, it's not a valid divorce. According to Rabbi Lazar, it is. Masnitsin the like in high title. Our mission is not like this. This opinion, the Tanya we learned. Amar Yesi Bar Yehuda, Leinachlegu Rabbi Yezer Bechachamim Alam Garishes Ishtayv Amar La Harei Mitaras Lachol Adam Mafutzni Plani Shteinim Garishes. Rabbi Yezer and the Chacham don't disagree. Alam Garishes Ishtayv. Someone who divorces his wife, Amrullah, he says to her, You're allowed to marry whoever you want, with the exception of that person. Okay, so this is the this is the other opinion, basically. The minute we just established the mission is chutz, an exception. 
Over here, Rabbi Yosef Rabbi Yehuda says, no, it's not an exception. An exception, everyone agrees. Uh, there's, no, there's no divorce. Which is not like our mission. Our mission says the debate is with regard to chutz, an exception. However, basically, we just says no. What's the debate? On condition that you don't get married to somebody else, to a, to a specific person. Yeah. Rebbe permits her to get married to any 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 individual. It, with the exception of that person, and the rabbis say it's not a valid divorce. My time, Rebbe Lazar. What's the reason, Rebbe Lazar? I mean, to have a cult tonight by Alma. Just like you can make any condition, one of the conditions could be that you can't get married to a specific person. Rebbe the rabbis say it's different. Cult tonight, Alma le Shire lo beget, talcha Shire lo beget. Because in effect, you can't. She can't marry a specific person that she wants to get married. Get married to, uh, therefore, <clears throat> this sort of that type of condition in effect creates a gap in the divorce. It says this is not a complete divorce, even though the divorce, technically speaking, is complete. It's just a condition that is riding on top of the divorce because the effect of the condition leads to the incompletion of the divorce that she can't get married to whoever she wants. Therefore, it's not a valid divorce. Okay. So that's Rabbi Yisrael, Rabbi Huda's version. His version is that when we, when we say you can get married to whoever you want, except for so-and-so, it was a condition. You can get married to whoever you want, except that if you marry so-and-so, the divorce is valid. It is invalid. The mission, on the other hand, says that's not, that's not the dispute. The dispute is with regard to an exception, literally, where he made an exception to the divorce. You're permitted to marry whoever you want, which is the basis of a divorce, is it? except for Reuben. So in the Mishnah, what's the debate between Rabbi Lozer and the Rabbanon? What's the reason of Rabbi Lozer? Rabbi Yana says the name of one, one elder. The Pasuk says, Rabbi Lozer says that she needs to be permitted if, she, if the permission of the divorce is even to one man, that's a divorce. Even if she was permitted only to marry a single person, I raise him Goreshis, that type of divorce is valid. That's the opinion of Rabbalaza. For Rabbanon Amring, for Rabbanon Hai Ish, what do they do with this possibility of, of Ish? In other words, that she, she seems to be permitted just to one person. Sigmar so says, Hai Ish, the call Ish Vish. They say Ish doesn't mean a person, it means to, to any person. That individual that she remarries could be any person and not just one person. That's the first opinion of the debate. In other words, the question is how to understand the word leish. The Belazer says leish means to, to even to only one person. And, and uh, the rabbis say any person, any, any, any human, whatever, any, any man. Okay, for Bechon and Amar, Bechon says, time and Rebelazer, the reasoning of Rebelazer is from here. The Isha Grusha, me Isha Loyikach. A Kayan cannot take the woman who is Gurusha Meisha, who is divorced from her husband. Rabbi Lazar interprets that to mean even if she was just divorced from her husband, but she wasn't necessarily permitted from, to anybody else. She's not allowed to marry Kayan. And the fact that she can't marry Kayan, what does that tell me? It tells me that the divorce was valid. So if the husband basically says, you're, I'm giving you a divorce, but you're not allowed to remarry anybody else. According to Rabbi Lazar, in this line of the Mishnah, that, that would work. That's the valid divorce because she's Lainis Garsha Elam Isha. She's divorced only from her husband. She's not allowed to marry anybody else. Tara says she can't marry Cain, which in effect is telling us that actually the divorce is valid. Al Mahavigita, the divorce itself is valid. Rabbanan and the rabbis say no. That, that, that gap that you're saying that if she's pro prohibited to a Kayan, therefore it must mean the divorce is valid, is not, va is not, a, is not a valid. Um, in inference. It's the Kahuna Shiny. There is a different set of laws with regard to Kayan. And therefore, even if the divorce itself is invalid, the fact that he gave an invalid divorce could also be sufficient to invalidate her, invalidate her to marry a Kayan. 
even if she isn't actually divorced. Just because a Kayan gets prohibited to a woman because it seems like she's divorced doesn't mean she's, she is actually divorced. According to the rabbi's opinion, a Kayan is prohibited to a woman who looks like she's divorced, even if she isn't actually divorced. And Rabbi Lozer says that uh, no, because she's prohibited to a Kayan, therefore that means that, the, that it is a divorce, and therefore we see that a divorce could be in effect even when she can't marry whoever she wants. Okay. Boy, Rababa, Rababa, the following question. So this is all talk of divorce. What happens in terms of marriage? The guy marries the woman. When a person gets married, it's the opposite, right? So now the woman, the woman agrees to become prohibited to, any, to everyone. What happens if he says, I prohibit you to marry anybody except for this person? So the Lord says, Tibaylor of Lazar. Tibaylor of Lazar. Tibaylor of Lazar. This question will be true according to Lazar. It will also be, be true according to the rabbis. Tibaylor of Lazar. Akram like Amr of Lazar. Hachalam Mishim Dechsiv Dikrai. Abu Hassan Kinyam Ali Be'in or not. According to Lazar. Maybe we should say that, uh, one second, that the reason why you can give a half a divorce is because specifically the Torah teaches you by divorce. That that uh, you can give you can give a half a divorce you can divorce a woman even when she's only permitted to one man or to no man at all. That such a divorce, such a conceptual framework of divorce exists. Abul Hassan, with regard to kedushin, Kenyan Kenyan you need a full fledged Kenyan. Idelma, or perhaps we say the Yatsav Haisa. We compare divorce to kedushin, just to marriage, just like by divorce such a divorce is valid. So to by kedushin it's valid as well. And the same question would also be true according to the rabbis. The rabbis here have the requirement that divorce completely separates the couple. There's no connection anymore, meaning there's no, there's no man the woman can't marry because of her husband. There's nothing tying her to her husband anymore. However, once he makes such a condition, an exception or a condition, uh, then there is something tying her to her husband. There is a man here that she's prohibited to because of her previous husband. That's why the divorce is not valid. I will have some a little more than halfway down, halfway down the page. Kenyan is the first one. Yeah. I will have some Kenyan Kaldahu. However, with regard to Kedushin, maybe any type of Kedushin works, even if the Kedushin has an exception. Instead of you becoming prohibited to all men, there is a couple of men that you're permitted to. We compare our condition to Gerishin, just like uh, just like Gerishin, you need to give a full fledged Gerishin without any exceptions. So to condition requires a full fledged condition without any exceptions. Fine, Labosity by after he had the question, Hadra Pashta, he resolved it. He says that it, the debate is identical. According to the rabbis, you can't do it, you can't give a half a divorce. You can't give a half a condition either. According to Rebelozo, you could give a half a divorce. You could also give a half a condition. Okay. I get back to Yvamas here for a second. So a little bit, little bit of background. You have uh, three brothers, right? Let's call them Reuben, Shimon, and Levi. They married three unrelated women. Well, they didn't, or does not make a difference. Reuben married one woman. Okay. The other, th the other two are single. Reuven dies. Okay. Uh, Shimon decides. Shimon decides he wants to marry Reuven's wife. So what he does is he does mimer. He gives kedushin, which is a rabbinical rabbinical requirement. Hashtus, at least a simple understanding. Of it that's what it is. And what happens is Shimon dies. And now the question is, can Levi do yibum? So the Gemara teaches he, he, Levi cannot do yibum. Why? Because that woman is connected to two brothers. She's connected to Ruven because nobody did Yibam yet. And she's also connected to Shimon because Shimon did Mimer. And therefore we call it the, 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 the woman of two brothers. She's, it's as if she's married someone to two brothers and, and there's no Yibam. You can't do Yibam, you Levi must do Chalitza. Okay, so Abayah comes out with an interesting, uh, an interesting uh, idea. Amr Abayah, Abayah is as follows. If you'll tell me 
that, that I buy into Rababa. In other words, that Kedushin could be done halfway, according to Rabbi Lozer. This thing is a halfway Kedushin. So what's the story in the following scenario? But you have two brothers, Reuben and Shimon, or Reuben, Shimon, and Levi, three brothers. Reuben says, That's it. Reuben says, you're allowed to marry, you're, you're prohibited to marry anybody else, the exception of my brother Shimon. You can marry Shimon. So Reuben's giving Kedushin with an exception of his brother. Sure enough, Shimon comes along, and what does Shimon do? Shimon says, Shimon says, I had a, says, I'm prohibiting you to all men, except for my brother Reuben. And then what happens? They both die. So in this case, I don't say that she is the wife of two, of two deceased brothers. Why not? My time, well. Kedushu the Reuven Ahanu, Kedushu the Shimon Lo Yahanu. Reuven's Kedushin, what happens? Reuven gave Kedushin. How many men did Reuven, did, did the woman become prohibited to? All except for one. All except for one. At that moment, she's permitted to all men, she's prohibited to all men except for one man. There's actually two men. So the, right, Reuven and Shimon. The one who gave her Kedushin and one other person. When Shimon gives her Kedushin, how many women did she become prohibited to? How many men? How many men? Zero. Because Reuben, she's, Reuben, she's permitted to, and he's not prohibiting her to Reuben, and all other men, she's anyways prohibited to. So effectively, Shimon's Kedushin is a non kedushin because there's no, there's no way that he separates her from, from everybody else. If Shimon would not have made an exception, Shimon would have said, I'm marrying you. <clears throat> then what happens? And she does become prohibited to Reuben. So then you could say that Shimon's condition should be valid. But if Shimon says, except for Reuven, I don't want to prohibit you to Reuven, Shimon's condition is a non condition because she, he doesn't prohibit her. She, she's exactly the same status in terms of who she can marry as she was yesterday. So therefore, the condition is not valid. One second. Okay. So, so, so how is it possible for her to be married to two brothers? Reuben says, you're prohibited to all men in the world. You're married to me, exception of Shimon. And Shimon gives her a regular Kedushin. The Kedusha Reuben Hanu Reuben's Kedushin says that you're prohibited to marry anybody in the world except for me and, me and Shimon. And Shimon's Kedushin here prohibits her to Reuben. Right? In the second scenario, Shimon gives her a regular Kedushin. So who does, who does she become prohibited to? Reuven. Reuven's condition prohibits her to all, women, all men, exception of Reuven, the one who gave the condition, Reuven and Shimon. Shimon's condition says you're prohibited to Reuven. So at least he did, his condition accomplished something. It's a valid condition. And now we see her connected to two different men, two different brothers. We say this is Aisha Shimon Mason. She's the wife to two deceased brothers. And therefore, the brother Levi cannot go ahead and do uh, Yibam. Boy, Abaya. Abaya has the following question. You're permitted to everybody except for Reuven and Shimon. Because of and then he says, Reuven and Shimon. Let me just frame this outside first. It's an interesting set of questions. It's, it's, it's not really, they're not really quite, they're sort of language questions. They're much more semantic questions than actual questions on our so yeah. But the structure of the questions is on our so yeah. The types of questions reflect questions about what, what we're talking about. But the actual factor that would make a difference here is semantics, not, not any sort of lumbus, you know, logical reasoning pertaining to the so yeah itself. Just let's, let me explain what I'm talking about. Okay, so what happens? The husband says you can marry whoever you want, except for Reuven and Shimon. Oh, and Reuven and Shimon. What does that mean? What's the and Reuven and Shimon? What does that mean? The husband says as follows, again, you can marry whoever you want, except for Reuven and Shimon. Oh, and Reuven and Shimon. What does that mean? Did he mean to say, did he mean my the Osir Shara? Meaning, what I just said, you're, you're not permitted to Reuven and Shimon, but I'm saying and Reuven and Shimon, meaning, oh, you know what? I'm also permitting you to Reuven and Shimon. He's, in other words, he's changing his mind. He's removing himself, he's removing the condition. That's one option. Or alternatively, he's substituting them. He's saying, you know what? You're actually you're permitted to you're permitted to marry Reuben and Shimon, but you're not permitted to marry anybody else. Is 
In other words, it's, it's sort of a semantic debate. What exactly did he mean there? Okay, now what happens if he says, same story, he says, uh, you're permitted to marry everybody except for Reuven and Shimon. Oh, and Reuven. What does that mean? More will explain in a moment. Or if he says, same thing, you're permitted to marry whoever you want except for Reuven and Shimon. Oh, and Shimon. I think more will we'll explain it about. Okay. <clears throat> so, boya, 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 five lines at the bottom. Except for Reuven and Shimon. You can't marry Reuven and Shimon. Because of Ramallah, we're talking about a divorce here. Because of Ramallah, then he says to her, Oh, the Reuven and Shimon too. What does that mean? What's the Reuven and Shimon? Mao. What's the story? Me, I'm reading by the Osir Shara. That that he prohibited, he's permitting. In other words, he's basically saying, You know what? Forget about that condition. Or my Osir Shara, that what he prohibited, he's permitting, meaning he's saying, You know what? Reuven and Shimon, you can marry. My Deshara also, and everybody else you can't. You can only get married to Ruben and Shimon. Okay. In terms of Limer, if you'll say, My Deshara. Now, in this case, the typical, typical rule, by the way, is when the Gemara says, if you're going to go according to one side, it typically means that the halacha is we do go with that side. Unless the Gemara equivocates on both sides of the equation. Over here, the Gemara does not equivocate both sides of the equation. It only equivocates to one side, which basically means that that is the halacha. That's typically the rule. There are exceptions to that. Okay, so in terms of Lamar, my da also shara. In other words, what he meant to say is, you know what? Forget about the condition. I said except, exception Reuven and Shimon. You know what? Forget about it. You can marry everybody, and you can also marry Reuven and Shimon. Is, is he saying these things or is he saying going writing the way he's saying it? He that, that, that would be the simple, yeah. The simple way to say it is he's saying it. So it's not it's a semantic question here. What, what, what did he mean? What did he mean? Okay, so let's say he meant to include them. Forget about the condition. Everybody's included. You're permitted to marry whoever you want. Okay, let's say he says just the words Reuven. Okay, so again, he says, you can marry whoever you want except for Reuven and Shimon. And Reuven. What does that mean? Reuven before Daniel Shimon. Does it mean both? Because Reuven was first. He meant to permit Reuven specifically, but not Shimon. In terms of the Reuven Dafka, if you'll say that Reuven means specifically Reuven, what happens if instead of saying Reuven, he says Shimon? Mahu, the Shimon void in the Reuven doesn't mean both. Because he, he just spoke about Shimon. He said Reuven and Shimon. So he says, you know, and Shimon meaning and Shimon and Shimon together with Reuven. I did almost Shimon Dafka, or does it mean specifically to Shimon? We together on the question? Similar question. Boy Ravashi. Ravashi is the following question. He says, Afla Shimon. Also Shimon. So he says to him, You can't, you can get married to whoever you want except for Reuven and Shimon. You know what? And also Shimon. Ma, what's the story? Does that mean what's the also Shimon? Does also Shimon mean mean everybody and also Shimon? Or does it mean Reuven and also Shimon? What's the also? You hear the question? You hear the question? What's the also a reference to? What's what's it connecting to? It's connecting to everybody or is it connecting to Reuven? It's saying the opposite. Af Reuven. Af Reuven. Does the Af mean also Reuven? We're just talking about everybody else. And Mars says, take you, let it stand. Okay. Let's start the next Kamara. But the truth of the matter is, the next Kamara really goes well into thinking uh, on the base. Okay. What happened was this Rebel Yezer, I have to presume, is probably Rebel Yezer Hagadol, um, which is, is Machlekes actually between if this would be Rebel Yezer Ben Aroch or Rebel Yezer Ben Horkinus, who the Sam Rebel Yezer is. Okay. Lach of Tiras the Shor Rebel Yezer, Rebel Yezer, after Rebel Yezer died. So Nicholas of Arboz came in Lahashu Four Four elders came in, four Tamid you know, and they said, we, we don't agree with Rebel Yezer's opinion. Remember, Eliezer's opinion is that an exception works. Either an exception works or a condition works. That's the, the question between, between the Mishnah and Rabbi Yitzhak Rabbi Huda. Whether the, whether the cat, whether the way this exception was done was as an exception to the document or, or the exception was done as, as a condition. So four people came in. Who are these four people? Rabbi Yitzhak Lili, Rabbi Tarfin, Rabbi Loz, Rabbi Nazario, and Rabbi Kiva. And each one of them is going to try to debunk the great deceased rabbi. The great Rebbe Yezer. So first, and they're, they're all trying to point out that Rebbe Yezer is basically absurd. It's so it's so illogical. It can't be. 
Okay, so Gemara says as follows. Nene of Tarfin. Tarfin stood up and he said as follows. Well, Amar says, hold on a second. Let's say she goes ahead and she marries. So the guy says, you can marry whoever you want except for Reuben. And she goes ahead and marries Reuben's brother, Shimon. And then, and then the Shimon dies without children. What happens is no Yibam. Why can't there be Yibam? It's a weird situation. There is Yibam, but, but you can't do the Yibam. Because if she does the Yibam, then retroactively there's no divorce. If it's a condition, or she's not allowed to do Yibam. So she's, she is Yibam, but she's not in Yibam. She can't do the Yibam. Because she's not divorced, she's not permitted to him. It's a weird state of limbo here. Lenim says that Aiko Davar He's basically eliminating the possibility of Yibam here because there is a, there is a Zkuka, mm-hmm. but there's no Zkuka. It's sort of like a it's an infinite circle here. Right. Because, because the extent that there is there is Zika, why shouldn't there be Zika? It's her brother. But if the Zika, she's not permitted to him. You sort of have the you sort of have two forces that are countering each other that are sort of it's an impossible you know it's it's the uh, it's the impossible can- cannibal stopping you know hitting the unstoppable post. You know what happens? It's, it's, what do you do? Is it's a mess here? It's fundamental. This is not a resolvable question. You can't even do chalitza. The whole thing is, is a clash. It doesn't make any sense. So if it doesn't make sense, then it should not be possible. It's just thing can happen. It's it's a logical fallacy to say that an, that an unstoppable cannibal will hit an unbreakable post. <laughs> an unstoppable cannibal means that there will be no post, and an unstoppable post means there will be no such cannibal, right? Right. Is, is, there's no, this is, is a clash here that, that's ir- unresolvable. It doesn't make any sense. Halamato, this is clear proof. Shane's a crisis. There's no way to give such a divorce. Okay, next problem. Then there will be a sick leader. Basically, he gets up. Amri says, hold on a second. How is it possible you should, you should be prohibited to one person, permitted to somebody else? We never find an example of a woman who's permitted to this person, but not per- but prohibited to everybody else because of marriage. If she's permitted to get married, she can marry whoever she wants. If she's prohibited to get married, she can't get married to whoever she wants. We find women that are married, they can't get married to whoever they want. We find women that are single, they could get married to whoever they want. Halamat, from here we see, she ends at crisis. This is not a, a divorce. pointed out the next problem. Crisis, what's a divorce? It has to be something that separates the marriage, it ends the relationship. There's no end to this relationship because she's permanently prohibited to somebody else because of her first husband. So therefore, holomato shains a crisis. It's clearly it's clear that such a divorce can't exist because the divorce doesn't separate them. They're still connected forever, basically. Then Rabbi Kiva, Rabbi Kiva says there's another problem. Let's say this man go, this woman goes ahead and she gets married to a random guy, and she has children, and it's Armel and it's Garsha. And uh, she get, she she's widowed or divorced. So again, so the 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 the, um, the guy gives a divorce. You can marry whoever you want, except for this person. Then she goes ahead and she marries a random person, someone who she's permitted to. They have children, and and he, and he dies, or he, or she gets divorced. And then she goes ahead and marries the the, the man who she's prohibited to marry. What happens? Lenim to get bottle and emam Turns out that, that if, it, especially if you say that it's a condition, it turns out that she's retroactively invalidating her middle marriage. Because it turns out if that's the case, I'm retroactive. It's clear that this can never be a divorce. Another version of this, which is a version I told you before. Let's say the guy was a Kayan. So he said, you're, permit, you're prohibited to marry anybody except for Aaron. I'm sorry, you, you're permitted to everyone except for Aaron the Kayan. And then sure enough, uh, the husband dies. Umais, and then he dies. Umais and Megarish, the guy who divorced her dies. Lenimsa Almona Etzla, Grusha Etz Kolodom. Turns out that to Aaron, she's a widow, and to the rest of society, she's a divorcee, which is also quite absurd. Therefore, the Kavachimer, hold on a second. The prohibition of divorce is a relative of a divorcee for Kayan is relatively speaking minor. Why is it minor? First of all, because it only relates to Kayan. It's a large chain of Shava Bakal. It only relates to a specific subset of the population. And second of all, the penalty is only lashes. 
Asura b'shvil tzad gerushin. She's prohibited because of the the aspect of divorce. Shabbat esh sishi chamur like Hoshkin. In other words, so if, it's, if, if, if the divorce status impacts her relationship to a Kayan, for sure the, her married status should, should impact her permission to a regular Jew. In other words, obviously it's, it's going to be the case that in this weird scenario, she's not going to be allowed to marry that Kayan because she's a divorcee, even though she's only a partial divorcee. Therefore, if that's the case, that a, divor that, that a Kayan has to be concerned about a partial divorcee, even though compared to him, He's not, a, she's not a divorcee. It's, it should be true that with regard to a regular Jew, a partially, a partially divorced woman, we should consider the partial marriage of her to prohibit her to those who she's permitted to. Because ultimately speaking, she's still partially married because she's not permitted to marry whoever she wants. Which means it's a partial mar marital connection. And that marital connection should impact her ability to get married to whoever she wants. Just like a, just like a Kayan who is the Aaron, right? The guy who's the exception. Can't marry a divorcee because as it pertains to other people, she's a divorcee. A regular Jew should not be able to marry her because as it pertains to one guy, she's a married woman. It's obviously, it's obvious the case that this is not a, this is not a divorce. Divorce is not valid. So says, You can't debunk the lion when he, after he dies. It's not fair that when, you know, when he was alive, you didn't want to come debate with him. Now that he's dead, you know, you're dancing on his grave, so to speak. You're basically, you're basically disagreeing with him because he's not here to defend himself. It's not a response. Okay, however, there's a big, better response here. Amar Rav, Rav says, Kulu islahu percha labar midra belozav in azar, yalesle percha. All of these are not difficult. There's a resolution to every one of these arguments, except for that of Rav Lozav in azar. And Tanya Amihachi, the Bryce says as well, Omar Biasi, right in his different Rebbe Lozman I like Rebbe Lozman Azari's argument more than anybody else. What was Rebbe Lozman Azari's argument? The definition of Krisus of divorce is the fact that you nullify the relationship, you dissolve it. If there's any type of connection that's still there, it's, not, it's, not, it's still married. You're not, the definition of divorce is you end the relationship. There's no ending the relationship. You got, the, the, mar the marriage is, is, is still in effect. So tomorrow we'll have to review Machlegs and Rebelozer and Rebelozer and Rebelon. We'll have to, and then we'll go each one. We'll go through unit by unit. Rebelozer, Segli, Tarfin, and Rebekiva. Why there's some sort of resolution to all these arguments? Seems to be very good arguments, but there's a way to resolve them. And therefore, it's, you know, the, the questions on Rebelozer, Rebelozer aren't that strong. Okay, have a great day. I saw a <clears throat> <clears throat>